Hello! Today we're going to take you through installing Apache OpenOffice, which is a, basically a free version of Microsoft Office that has been made by the Apache Foundation. There are other options available like LibreOffice, but if you type in OpenOffice, all one word, the main website, openoffice.org, will appear at the top, and this is the official website to get it from. And there's lots of options. The website's quite basic, but the one that we want is the second option down. I want to download Apache OpenOffice. We're currently on release 4.1.14. It is free, so if you end up on another website, don't get fooled by it. So Windows 32-bit EXE and English British is auto-selected. We can actually run um, a 64-bit version if it was available, but only 64-bit is for Linux at the moment, and there is an OS X version. So we'll go with the Windows 32-bit option, and it will take us through to SourceForge to download that. Two, one, download. Uh, the download initially itself is 136 megabytes, so it should be quite speedy. I anticipate there that it will actually require a further download on top of that because a whole suite of office applications 136 megabytes seems rather ambitious if i do say so myself and um, so it's free it's open source so everybody could look at the code if you want to and you can understand it and it is maintained by a community of developers so as you can see they're looking for help here if you've got c++ skills that's what apache open office is coded in or if you're a technical writer proficient in english want to do some translation for them then that's where you go and um, once it's downloaded if you single click it it will open up the apache open office installer then you would present with user access control so that um, it can make changes to the hard drive which is absolutely normal when installing applications so we're going to click yes and then it says, thank you for downloading uh, OpenOffice 4.1.14. Installation files must be unpacked and copied to hard disk in preparation for the installation. After that, the installation will start automatically. So we're going to click next and we're going to install. We're going to put, leave the install files going to the default location. It's putting them on the desktop, 138.6 megabytes. Remember, this isn't actually the OpenOffice install file. These are just temporary files. Um, that it's going to install it's not the actual application suite itself and for those files it'll take 138.6 megabytes so we're going to leave the default press unpack and then it should actually launch the actual installer which is presumably going to ask us to um, choose which office applications we want and then probably download a whole chunk of files for us so here we are with the installation wizard so it looks very similar to what we've had before so we're going to click next um, if customer information, you can enter anything here. This screams old school because this is what uh, Microsoft made you do in like the 90s. Um, and they install the application for anyone who uses this computer with. That's the default. We're going to leave it. Or you can just have it only for me, which is your current user account. Um, you can choose complete or custom. So complete will install the main components. For most people, that'll be fine. We're going to head into custom to see what options we can select. So the different applications we've got are open office writer so this is your equivalent of word basically to create letters word docu uh, word documents text documents uh, open office calc which is an excel equivalent um analyze information produce graphs etc uh, draw which is used for creating drawings and diagrams impress which is the equivalent of powerpoint used to create presentations and meeting slides base which is the equivalent of Microsoft Access for editing databases and math to help um, use scientific and mathematical equations within your documents. Optional components that are available, we've got dictionaries, graphics filters, um, various bits there, an active X control mobile device filters are unchecked and we're gonna leave it the same. The default installation location is in Program Files Open Office 4. If you do want to change it, you can click there and then select your own um, installation folder, but we're going to leave it in the default location. And we're going to click Next now after we finish configuring that. Now, Open Office can be set as a default application for all your documents that used to be opened in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the various Office applications. If you're just testing it out, you'll want to uncheck all these. 
if you are intended on using OpenOffice as your main office software on the computer, leave all of these checked. So Word documents, Excel documents and PowerPoint presentations will automatically open in OpenOffice if you leave those checked. So we're going to click on next and then it says it's ready to begin the installation. If you leave the box checked, it's going to create a start link or, or an icon on the desktop. So we'll leave that on and we're going to click install now. So it's going to say the installation can take several minutes as usual and it begins copying the new files. There will be quite a lot in there because it's a, a full office suite. So it does take a little amount of time. And once it gets to the end, it should start doing its mopping up process of clearing up the installation. And once that has finished, we'll be able to start using Open Office. So Installation Wizard has finished. That's um, pretty fast for Office, for an Office application. We click Finish. There's no option for it to auto start. So we're going to go over to the Open Office icon over here. I'm going to double click it. And once we do that, we'll get the splash screen loading up. It might take a little longer to open on your PC when it's the first time going through. Uh, we will go through the registration of OpenOffice. This bit is mandatory, so we'll click Next on that. Provide your full details below. Whether you enter them or not is optional, even though it's trying to suggest it's not, but you can enter your full name, surname, and initials, which will attribute documents you create to you as the author or the last person to modify the file in the metadata of what you produce. We're going to leave it for the moment and press Finish. And then it's going to open up the main OpenOffice window. So here we can see we can create text documents, spreadsheets, presentations, drawings, database, and formula, which align with the components that were selected for installation. We can also click this to open an existing file or have a look at templates. So the template's been prepared for first time usage. My templates is empty. We can do presentation backgrounds which were created, so fairly basic at the moment. You can get more templates online. Um, for presentations, you can get actual defaults of these. So if we go and introduce a new product, then what it should do is open the presentation software, uh, open Office Impress, which will then allow us to edit this template and use for our own PowerPoint documents. So here we are, we can see it's um, a little bit of a groovy one, um, not in widescreen. So again, it, it does look a bit old school, but um, basically sets out a template that you can use and modify as you want. As you can see, users of PowerPoint will be pretty familiar with this interface. So there isn't really a steep learning curve. If we close Impress now and go back to the main open office, we can see how fast it opens up on the second time. If we click on text document, it will create us a new text document. Again, use of Word will be familiar with this interface. It looks a bit more like old school Word from, from the late 90s, early 2000s, but it does the job and it's free. So that's it. That's OpenOffice installed and configured on our computers. Hope that helps. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more tech related videos and we'll see you shortly. Bye.